Now, when it comes to crafting a great story, the hardest and most important part tends to always be getting your audience to truly care about your characters in some way, shape, or form. To make them either come to love or hate them, to get them so vested in their journeys that they begin to genuinely root for or against them, and then have some type of emotional response, a positive or negative one, when they either succeed or fail in the end. And yeah, obviously something like world building is also very important, especially in many forms of fiction such as fantasy and sci-fi. But a beautifully imagined world or galaxy in the case of Star Wars will quickly become a boring place if it doesn't have interesting characters to populate it. And there are many ways or means by which, or even tricks, that a writer tries to get you to initially care about their characters, but they generally all boil down to either direct or indirect characterization, or how they convey who the character is, or what they're all about, how they let us know the sort of traits or motivations that make them up. And I think we've gotten two very different and interesting examples of characterization, two opposite approaches and examples in recent Star Wars content, those being the way Reva from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series was presented and handled, versus the way Deidre Mero from Andor was presented and handled. And right away, or at face value, both come off as very similar characters or have quite a bit in common. They are both considered villains or antagonists and are very driven and ambitious and are out to sort of prove themselves by any means necessary. And they both have others within their own ranks that don't like them or want to keep them down because of where they came from. Reva was not liked or respected by the Grand Inquisitor or other Inquisitors because, as the story tells us, she essentially came from the gutter. While for Deidre, it was mainly Blevins who she had an issue with or had issues with her, though others within the ISB hierarchy also seem to be underappreciating or undervaluing her as well, in large part because of her background in enforcement, where we were told she apparently excelled and originally came from, which is pretty much all the story ever explicitly tells us about her. It also never really gives us much in the way of blatant hints so that we can try and infer more about her backstory. We know virtually nothing about where she comes from or what caused her to be this way and what truly motivates her now. Or should I say the cause or reason behind the motivation? Because yes, we know she is indeed highly motivated. We know what she wants and that she is out to prove herself along the way. The show conveys that extremely well with her words and actions alone. In other words, her characterization is mainly done indirectly. The story isn't going out of its way to directly or explicitly tell us who she is and why she is this way, or even how we should feel about her. We never get anything like her telling us some sort of sob story from her past via telling another character in the show about it, nor do we see some sort of flashback to her youth, or whenever it might be, where a tragic event took place that molded her into this person, a single moment in time that now somehow defines every single thing about her, and that she must perhaps try and overcome. Basically, the Andor series handles the character of Deidre very unapologetically. It's making no excuses for her actions. She simply is who she is, and you're left to decide how you feel about her based simply on what you're seeing her do and go through in the present tense of the story. And what's interesting about that, or an interesting outcome, is some of us even start to empathize with her or root for her as she struggles to be taken seriously, even though she's on the side of the quote-unquote bad guys and is actively working against the quote-unquote good guys of the story. And she's also doing some pretty horrible things along the way. She is doing things such as torture or ordering it. And again, the show is in no way trying to make excuses for or for her. This is then in stark contrast to the way Reva's characterization is handled, because quite literally the first scene of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is her as a child experiencing a tragic event that will, as we'll soon learn, completely define who she is and what she wants or is trying to accomplish going forward. It, for better or worse, spoils everything about her down to one moment in time that happened before the current story even began, her entire motivation has immediately been set and essentially directly told to us via flashback. And not only that, but as Star Wars fans, we know the impact of Order 66. We know how horrible it was for the Jedi, which she quite clearly was or was a youngling when it happened. 
In other words, with the opening flashback, the show is not only trying to get us to care about Riva right out of the gate because of no other reason than our understanding of that event and the impact it would no doubt have on her, but also to, in a sense, excuse the despicable actions we'll see out of her soon enough. It doesn't want us to right away think of her as nothing more than a cold-blooded villain. It wants there to be context around things like her cutting off a woman's hand and a willingness to torture a child, that being Leia. Or the fact that, as an Inquisitor, she's almost certainly hunted down and killed plenty of Jedi. It wants to put in her head that these things were not exactly her fault. That she was made this way, and if not for the tragic event that we right away got shown, she'd be a Jedi right now, she'd be a good person, or she still is one at heart. Which then, yeah, heavily, heavily clues us in on the redemption arc to come. And that eventual redemption gets further implied when she later tells Obi-Wan about what happened to her in the Jedi Temple, that she was left for dead by Darth Vader, and that she now only wants to get close to him, close to Vader, in order to kill him. That is the reason, or the noble excuse, for everything she's done. And don't get me wrong, this in and of itself isn't bad writing or storytelling. It connects one of our main antagonists to our main protagonist in profound ways. It connects Reva and Obi-Wan, which is good or can be or should be interesting. Plus, an argument could be made that nearly no price is too high in order to try and stop Darth Vader. That there is indeed a type of dark nobility in sacrificing her very soul, if you will, to stop the ultimate evil. Or, at least there would be if her goal was actually to stop Vader for the sake of stopping Vader and not simply for vengeance. Which isn't to say getting vengeance, or that being her only motivation, couldn't have worked well. Problem is, it's a bit odd to, in the process of getting vengeance for fallen Jedi, to kill other surviving Jedi. And I think if she was doing it simply to stop Darth Vader, that she knew it had to be done at any cost, not only does it make more sense for the story we get, but she could earn some comparisons to another and or character, that being Luthen Rail. Because he has done some pretty awful things for the sake of stopping the Empire. He's committed evil acts to stop a greater evil, which of course Reva could relate to. And his acknowledgement of not only the price he's personally paid, even without knowing the full extent of that price, without knowing his backstory or knowing about some tragic event that sent him down this path, it comes off feeling far more intriguing and earned than what Reva gets in the end. Because Andor doesn't try and pretend that Luthen should be forgiven for all he's done because he did it for the right reasons or had an excuse for it. There's no sort of context here. It tells us, or he tells us, he shouldn't ever be forgiven. That he can't be, but that someone had to do all he's done. Someone had to pay the price he did. Luthen, interestingly enough, gets sympathy from us for acknowledging he cannot be redeemed. Again, there is this dark nobility to what he has done, which makes the character truly fascinating. And though something like that could have worked for Riva, they instead try to go the truly heroic path with her in the end, despite that being nearly impossible to accept given not only all we've seen her do right in the story, but all she's implied to have done before it. And so instead of her taking blame and responsibility for all of those things, acknowledging in some way, shape, or form that having horrible things done upon you does not grant you some type of immunity for visiting horrible things upon others, they instead try to imply that her uh, sparing the life of a child she had no real reason to kill in the first place was a truly worthwhile act that earns her some level of redemption. And that we should feel both sorry for her and everything that's happened to her, despite the things we've seen her do, and we should celebrate this monumental moment for her. We are uh, supposed to celebrate her not killing a kid, I guess. And so Riva's story, for now, ends with a moment of what the story at least wants us to see as great strength after opening with great weakness or tragedy in the beginning. She's overcome that thing that happened to her all those years ago that completely explains everything the character has been all about since then. The story has resolved the conflict it gave to her before the story even began, and there's another example I could think of this that does pretty much the same thing. But I digress, and this is then in stark contrast to the way Deidre's story ends, for now at least, she'll be in season two, 
where after being presented as strong the entire show, though having these obstacles around her to make her relatable where many did not believe in her, not to mention the rebels she's looking for, constantly stay one step ahead of her and thwart her in the end, and after not making any excuses for the way she is, where instead of her story opening with some tragedy that explains who she is and sets the table for what's to come, or giving us some tragic backstory at some point during the story, her what potentially could be life-defining or changing moment takes place in the actual story, and through a moment of profound weakness in or at the end, she would have almost certainly been killed if it wasn't for being rescued by Cyril, something the character Deidre clearly is not used to. She's not used to losing control of a situation and then needing someone to swoop in and whisk her away to safety. She is not used to being the damsel in distress, you could say. And seeing that moment of weakness in the end makes the character feel far more human and relatable and makes us wonder what will be the repercussions. How will this event that we just saw change her going forward? Or will it even... Does she somehow shake this off, or will it haunt her henceforth, and maybe even be a catalyst for future change? Basically, with Deidre, we feel like we've watched or been shown the creation of a character, not just had one presented to us and told why we should care, and then given a resolution in the end that is meant to be a profound conclusion to a beginning that happened before our story even began. And though I'm not saying you couldn't or shouldn't have enjoyed the story of Reva in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, I'm not saying you can't love the character or that different means of characterization can't work. And I dare say that many writers these days try too hard to play by the rules instead of trying something new and different. I'm only saying that, as I said at the beginning, that getting people to actually care about your characters is not easy and that there are many ways or tricks to go about it and that some of them tend to work far better than others. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me which character or characterization means do you think worked better? Did you like Riva or Deidre better, or maybe do you like them both, or neither one? Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.